Hi guys. So as I mentioned in a recent video of mine, Volvo Cars is fully committed to phase out all of its combustion engine powered models by 2030. What this means is that in nine years time, if you were to walk into any Volvo showroom, you will not have the option of buying a brand new Volvo with a conventional engine. And they are well underway to fulfilling that promise because if you look at their lineup today, all of their models are already heavily electrified. The XC40, XC60, XC90, S60, S90, all come with the option or come standard with plug-in hybrid models. But moving forward, Volvo is taking another big step towards that holy grail of full electrification. And it has just been confirmed that as soon as 2022, Volvo will be replacing the XC90 with a brand new all-electric SUV. When I switched to Pro Mileage, in my case, I got 46-47% of savings oh, for that car. Yeah. Pro Mileage was the only one that gave me 5,000 extra value to cover, yet still cheaper, a lot less. A lot Turn less. up! <laughs> What you're seeing on the screen right now is the concept recharge. Volvo calls it a manifest of its electric future, but the reality we suspect is that it is a preview of the upcoming XC90 replacements design. Now, Volvo is also very careful in wording their communication. They call this car a replacement of the XC90, a successor of the XC90 rather than calling it the next generation XC90. So this hints at the possibility that a name change is being considered perhaps to usher in a start of a new era of electric powered motoring. Now what's said about this new model is that, well, it's an SUV and it is built on an all new dedicated EV platform. So it's design, it's development, its engineering, its internal configuration and layout are all unencumbered by traditional constraints of combustion engine models which need to accommodate bulky engines, transmissions and whole drive lines. And that means more available space and more freedom for the designers and engineers to work on the car. And this is why its proportions are somewhat different to what we have grown traditionally accustomed to as SUVs. You can see the wheels, for example, have been pushed right to the ends of the car without the need of lengthy overhangs. And the frontal edge can be made lower for two benefits. One, for better over-the-top visibility for the driver. So this means that even though the car can sit lower than a traditional SUV, you still somewhat enjoy the raised wheel point of an SUV. The other thing is that with a lower front, the aerodynamics of the car improve and that means a better cruising range for the vehicle. Now design-wise, the concept recharge shows a natural progression of the current generation Volvo design language reinterpreted into a vehicle without the traditional constraints of a combustion engine. So you can see the grille, which is no longer needed, is gone. But the Thor Hammer daytime running light, which has been a signature appearance of Volvo cars over the last six or seven years, have been retained, but with an added touch of sophistication. Now check this out, guys. When you switch on the main beams, the two halves of the Thor Hammers actually open up like eyelids to let the main beams out. So this looks properly cool, properly sophisticated. Now you come to the back, the traditional Volvo SUV and wagon design queue of long vertical taillights 
are preserved, but of course reinterpreted for the new generation. Now, one of the most noteworthy aspects of the Concept Recharges interior is its completely flat floor because remember this is a dedicated electric vehicle platform, so there's no need for the traditional center tunnel running through the middle of the cabin. And you notice just under the center console between the front seats, there is an opening big enough for you to store a whole travel bag inside there. Now this dashboard you can see here is obviously a concept car special. You can expect the production variant to include rudimentary things like aircon vents. But things that you can see here include a further evolution of the current generation dashboard design. The wing structure that underlines the lower edge of the dashboard for one and a further expansion of the current portrait style touchscreen to 15 inches which in this case ushers in a new age infotainment built specially for Volvo's next generation electric vehicles called volvocars.os now it's an all new software platform which Volvo co-developed with Google but the philosophy continues from the current generation infotainment system which prioritizes easy access of all functions. So unlike the infotainment system you typically find on German cars, there is no burying of features under layers upon layers of menus and submenus. All important functions are meant to be accessible with just one touch of the relevant shortcut keys. The system is also designed to enable seamless connectivity with your mobile phone in which you can use it as a key or to perform functions like remote starting the engine for example on a hot sunny day to cool down the cabin. Now that Volvo is fully embracing electric power moving forward, there is actually no further need for them to expend resources on engine development which in the case of traditional car making is always the most time and resource consuming aspect of a vehicle development. The resources that are being freed from not having to work on a mechanically complex combustion engine has enabled Volvo to redirect its resources to internally develop batteries, motors, and even the control software that operate the propulsion of their cars. So in design and production of all these systems being moved in-house, Volvo would now have better control of the quality and performance of their electric power systems. And where battery development is concerned, Volvo's ultimate aim is to lengthen the range of their cars and shorten the charging times. So Volvo's approach is to increase the energy density of their batteries and the aim is to hit a real-world cruising range of 1,000 kilometers whilst at the same time cutting charging times by half. And moving even further forward, Volvo plans to integrate the battery's construction and mounting directly into the vehicle's chassis, thereby enhancing the structural strength of the car. Now, of course, no discussion of Volvo would be complete without talking about safety. Previously, their aim was to have zero casualties from a Volvo car. Moving forward, their aim now has been further refined to zero collisions. And with the successor model of the XC90, Volvo will be debuting their next generation ADAS system, which uses LiDAR to scan its surroundings. So what is LiDAR? Well, LiDAR is like radar, but the difference is radar uses radio waves. LiDAR uses laser. So think of LiDAR as the eyes and ears of the car as it moves about its daily business. And of course, with the next generation of cars, there will be an increased level of autonomous driving capabilities built into the vehicle system. And powering that increased autonomy is a new autonomous driving computer developed by Volvo in collaboration with NVIDIA. Yeah, it's those guys who develop the graphics cards in your gaming computers. And as Volvo marches toward the future, they are also giving a nod to their past. As we all know, since the 1970s, Volvo engineers actually go to the roads and see the aftermath of actual accidents and gather data which they use to refine the future development of their cars. Now, they are taking it a step further by putting all that into your car. So what this means is that in the future, when you buy a Volvo car with your agreement, of course, means you have to agree to it. You have the opportunity to contribute data of your driving 
conditions, your daily experiences back to Volvo Cars data center in which they would use that data to further refine the programming, the calibration of their autonomous driving systems, which can then be fed back to your car and every other Volvo car out there through constant over-the-air updates in which Volvo hopes to continuously improve the accuracy and dependability of their autonomous driving systems as more and more motorists use them on the road. So it's a continuous feedback loop with more people using the cars and therefore contributing to more improvements along the way. Okay guys, so that's it for today's video. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed this and hope this content has been useful for you. If you like what you watch on this channel, hit the subscribe button if you please. And as is the saying of our times, guys, take care out there, stay safe. I'll see you in the next video. Marvelous. Artificial intelligence skin.